Hello, strangers out there. Uh, my daughter recently watched a movie, the movie Anastasia by Don Bluth for the hundredth time. And it got me to wondering, if the monarchy were restored to Russia, who would be the czar? Uh, the answer to that isn't that easy. Um, first, as is well known, Tsar Nicholas II and his entire family, including Anastasia, uh, were all killed by communist Bolsheviks soon after the communists had taken over, changing Russia into the Soviet Union. So, as no one in the family survived to find a possible successor to that throne, you have to go back a generation or two and see if there's any siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, um, in the line, and if any of them survived the 1917 revolution. Uh, turns out at least a few did. And one of the current offspring, the one with the best claim to that throne, is this woman here. Her name is Maria Vladimirovna. She is the heir presumptive to the Russian throne. Her line goes back to Alexander II, Nicholas II's grandfather. At the moment, she is the most recognized as being the heir to the throne. Um, now, however, there is at least one other pretender to the Russian throne. Uh, his name is Dmitry Romanovich Romanov. And he's descended from Nicholas I, which is Nicholas II's great-grandfather. So his claim is a generation weaker, however. So it could be said that um, he doesn't have as good a claim. On the other hand, he could have a better claim due to the fact that he is male. Not that that matters much anymore in this day and age. But he also carries the royal family name of Romanov, whereas Maria doesn't. So... Those are the two Russian pretenders. Uh, and by pretenders, I mean those who should be king or queen, but aren't because of either abdication or revolution or some other means. Uh, if the monarchy were restored to their respective countries, um, they these people would have the best claim to those uh, thrones uh, for their country. But that got me to wondering, who are the other pretenders in Europe? Um... I'll do one for other continents later, uh, as many of them are very confusing. Um, but since the uh, French Revolution, there have been many countries in Europe that have removed their monarchies for a number of reasons. Uh, Albania, I'll just go in alphabetical order, Al Albania, uh, Austria, Hungary, uh, Bulgaria, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Montenegro, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Serbia, and a bunch of others that either don't exist anymore or shared monarchs with other countries at some point. Or, you know. So, you can look at these people uh, up on Wikipedia, and I'll provide a link below so you can go find them and um, get into more details about them. But uh, here's a brief rundown of who might rule if the monarchy were restored to their respective countries. So starting off with Albania, again going in alphabetical order here, uh, you have Prince Leka. Uh, Austria, Hungary, uh, pick one. Um, they, The claimant to that throne is Karl von Habsburg. Um, Bulgaria is, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, Simeon, Simeon uh, the second. Now, this guy was not only king of Bulgaria during the 40s, um, but after being thrown out by the communists, um, he went to exile and then returned in the 90s when communism was over. And then he became prime minister from 2001 to 2005. So this is the former king who's now prime minister. Uh, he's the only one on this list that's, uh, that's ever done that. Uh, Greece is King Constantine II. Um, Montenegro is Nikola II. Uh, Poland, their uh, best successor would be Rudiger of Saxony. Um, Portugal's claimant is Duarte Pio. Romania is King Michael I. Uh, Serbia has two claimants, much like Russia. Um, Nikola II of Montenegro... 
uh, can also claim the Serbian throne. He is the grandson of Prince Mirko, uh, the heir designate of King Alexander the um, First. Uh, so you got those two, um, but Alexander ended his reign in 1903. Now there is another Alexander who claims to be the crown prince of Yugoslavia, and he's descendant of King Peter, who came after Alexander. So, in a sense, he's got the better claim because he's a generation ahead. Uh, France has no less than three pretenders. Um, due to the revolutions, <laughs> the several revolutions in France, and then the restorations of the various monarchs in between. Um, first, of all, first of all is Prince Louis, uh, the Duke of Anjou, um, who is a, a Bourbon descendant. He is uh, related to King Louis XIV, um, the Sun King. Uh, then there is Prince Henri, uh, the Count of Paris and the Duke of France. Um, he is descendant of Louis Philippe, who was a king of France during the mid-1800s, uh, 1830-1848. Then you have Charles Napoleon, who is uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, he is a nephew, a grand, great-grand nephew of not only Napoleon III, but also Napoleon I. Napoleon Bonaparte. So, you got three different people that could claim, make a pretty legitimate claim to the French throne if they ever brought it back. Uh, Germany is a mess. Uh, due to the German Holy Roman Empire being more of a confederation of small kingdoms and duchies rather than a single empire. So, there are lots of pretenders to those various thrones. Um, however, the unification of Germany near the end of the 19th century did create one clear monarch, and based on that, the current pretender to the German throne would be Georg Friedrich, uh, who was descendant from Kaiser Wilhelm II, uh, the last king of Germany, who was deposed after World War I. Um, Italy is a similar mess for similar reasons. Uh, Italy didn't become unified Italy, um, as we know it, Italy, um, until the mid to late 1800s. Um, and because of that, there are also two claimants to the throne of the entire country there, too. Um, first one is Amadeo Savoy, uh, who is a descendant from King Vittorio Emmanuel II, uh, who ruled in the mid 1800s. But probably the better one is a Vittorio Emmanuel IV so stylized, who is the heir apparent of King Umberto II, who is the last king of Italy. Um, he was deposed shortly after World War II. Uh, let's see. Ireland has never really had a united single king. There's There's been lots of different chieftains and kingdoms and stuff like that through there, so therefore there isn't any single claimant to any Irish throne. And if Scotland were to f actually break away, like they tried bef uh, f about a few months ago, uh, from the rest of the UK, and they wanted to restore a monarchy uh, of their own, uh, say in the, Jew uh, the Stuart line, uh, they'd have to actually go to Germany, specifically B Bavaria, uh, to find the heir apparent to the Stuart and Jacobite line. Uh, his name is Franz, and he was the Duke of Bavaria, uh, one of those, again, pretenders to the smaller thrones that don't exist anymore in Germany. So he's not only the Duke of Bavaria, but he could also be the King of Fran uh, the King of, Scully King of Scotland. Uh, he's descended from... Um, Charles I of England, uh, who was a Stuart king, uh, had his head chopped off and uh, lost to the uh, uh, the parliamentarians, uh, Cromwell and all that. So now that's kind of funny. Uh, it's a bit ironic in a sense that you know, given that the Jacobite Revolution um, was an attempt to either remove the German King George I from the English throne and restore a Scottish Stuart king onto the onto the entire 
United Kingdom throne there, or at least remove Scotland from control of George so they could have their own just Stuart-controlled Scotland again. Um, so in order to have that, they'd have to go to Germany and, again, put a German on the throne. So anyway, I um, hope this has been at least uh, informative for you as it was for me. Um, if you like this, please click that like button below. Don't also forget to, uh, also don't forget to subscribe. And check out the links to my books and social media pages also below down in the description. And until next time, stay strange, everybody. Bye.